Now, in the third uh, property that we talked about, that uh, straight lines are completely defined. So you can define them by when you're given at least two points, you can be given two points in a straight line and you're told to determine the values of M, all those that are the value of M and C, or the value of A and B. Another way, you can be given at least one point and a coordinate. How do you go about that? Now, in the case where you have at least one, two points, eh? at least two points, like in our illustration, you can see between points A with coordinates 2 and 4, and point B coordinate 6 and 24. Now, let's say there's another point here, uh, x, y. What you will realize with a just like the way what we said at the time, with a straight line, M, the value of M will always be the same. The value of gradient at any given point will always be the same. Now, how do we get gradient? Gradient is change in coordinates. So, change in coordinate X, or coordinate Y, over change in coordinate X. Where in this case, we have 24 minus 4, where 24 is for y and 4 is also for y for coordinate a then 6 minus 4 the gradient of this line is 5 is 5 now we know that gradient m1 m1 equal to m2 at given point so how do you go about it change in x coordinate y over change in coordinate x or p will always be the same as changing coordinates of b in relation to changing coordinates of a so that is why we say if it is the same what we do here we will have y minus 24 is equal to if you take this on the other side it will be 5 into bracket x minus 6 so you will have y minus 24 is equal to 5x minus 30. So you remember the form of a equation of a straight line will always be y is equal to mx plus c. So you check y is equal to mx, which is 5x plus c, that is minus 30. If you take 24, the other side, it becomes plus 24. So y is equal to 5x minus 6. So what are the values? So if this is in the form of y is equal to mx plus c, this tells you very well that m is 5, which is the coordinate, and c is negative 6. So what does this show you? This show you, tell you that the line over this line, this line, it cuts x axis, y axis at negative 6. At negative 6. So c is the y intercept. It's the y intercept. Alternatively, 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 we can have it in the form of a plus bx. How do you do it? So in the form of y is equal to a plus b x and here we have two the two points so what do you do in this case like y our y for this first equation is equal to we don't know what a is we don't know what b is but we have the coordinates the values of y and x y and x so what do we do take for the first coordinates take y is 4 equal to a we don't have it b we don't have but x we have as 2 so we just write 2 x we have it there then then uh, no no sorry we have b already this is what we want we have x so it is 2 2 b then we go for the second point this is point point A, then point B, we have Y as 24 equal to 
A we don't know, B we don't know, but Y in this case, our X for that is 6, 6B. So this is point B. Now, these two equations, we can solve them using any method. We have three methods that you can use. You can use uh, elimination method. You can use substitution method. You can also use matrix method. But for this purpose, let us use elimination. Using elimination, elimination method. Using elimination method, we now want to eliminate this one out. Now when you are eliminating, this is 4 equal to A plus 2B and uh, 24 equal to A plus 6B. What do you do in this case? You can decide, like now this one, is, uh, this one will give you 0 if you subtract them. So what you can decide to do, you can make uh, B to be equal by simply multiplying the lower one by 2 and the upper one by already this is 0 by the way now that will no need of multiply because you can eliminate a by just subtracting for you to get 0 so this one just take 24 minus 4 which gives you 20 then 4 minus 6 minus 2 gives you 4b so you divide B is, fa is 5. Really, you have the value of B. If you have the value of B as 5, you simply substitute it on either of the equation, which gives you 4 equal to A plus 2 into 5. So 4 equal to A plus 10. Take that the other side. A is equal to 4 minus 10 which is minus 6. Now you see, our A is negative 6, which was the same as C, intercept, and our B is 5, which was the same as the value of M. So alternative way that you can do it. So this one proves the point that you can, it is well defined by the first option. Now the second one is at least a point and a gradient. So you can be given a point, eh? can be given a point and you can also be given a gradient and you are told to determine the equation or to determine those other the other point which is which is missing for example you can be given equation of a straight line they can give you equation of a straight line and uh, you can be given a point let's assume can you be given a point point A, which is 3 to 10. Then you are given, you are given a gradient of negative. So let's say this is B, which is not given, and you are given a gradient to be negative 0 0.5. So this one, if this is the gradient, negative 0 0.5. So you can easily and simply get the values of x and y using any method because you know that the equation of a straight line is always in the form of that is what should come into your mind that equation of a straight line is either in the form of mx plus c or y is equal to a plus a plus bx so y is equal to a plus bx look at this huh? do you have the value of y Yes, for the first equation, you have the value of y, which is 10. So 10 is equal to, do you have a? A you don't have. Do you have b? B you don't have, but you have 3. So you take it as mm, x you have, which is 3, but you don't have b. Now, what this, does this tell you? A uh, 3, this is x. B is the gradient of this line. B is the gradient of the line. So you can easily get A, which is the y-intercept. So 10 is equal to A plus 3 times
times negative 0 0.5. So 10 equal to A plus minus 4.5, no 1.5, 1.5. So 10 is equal to A minus 1.5. So if you take it the other side, A will be 11.5. So already you have got the value of A. So when somebody asks you the question, for you to get the question of this straight line, it's very simple now. You have A, you also have B, and you also have X. So how do you go about it? The question will now be Y, if Y is equal to a plus bx you simply check where is your a y is equal to where is your a 11.5 what is your b b remember is the slope of the line which is 0 0.5 so that will be negative 0 0.5 x so that is that equation now that you can easily get it so those are the properties of a straight line function which is very, very important that you need to know. If you are asking an exam, you explain three main properties of a straight line. You will simply say straight line, they are functions which are always in the form of y is equal to mx plus c or y is equal to a plus b x. Then also you can say these questions, they the straight line functions they when they plot them they will always give you a straight line all the time then also they have one root that is where the line will always cut x-axis at one point then lastly you can completely define it by if you're given at least a point and a gradient or two points so you can completely define it now, let us look at the applications, applications in business, applications in business. Now, where do we apply this function in business, in real life situations? What are the applications of linear functions in business? We are going to look at uh, applications in areas like analysis of commission, analysis of commission can be used when analyzing commission in a company you want to determine the commission that you gave you give to employees especially the salesmen you want to analyze that you will be able to do that with, with the function with the linear function you will be able to do that assessment analysis then computation of depreciation computation of depreciation now you know depreciation is the loss of value reduction in value of an of a fixed asset of an asset so the rate at which uh, you can be able to compute the depreciation easily using these functions that we are going to look at then another one is uh, analysis of demand and supply analysis of demand and supply yeah where do we use it in demand and supply and finally cost cost volume profit analysis we call it CVP CVP analysis these are the major use major application of linear functions in business the major functions or major application of linear function in business concept analysis of commission how do you analyze commission we are going to look at the various variables which are used in that then computation of depreciation how do you compute depreciation of a fixed asset or even appreciation of fixed asset, especially now the ones with, which you normally appreciate like land. Then analysis of demand and supply. Analysis of demand and supply. This is a very 
important concept in economics where we cannot fail to talk about when it comes to linear function because you will realize that more most of the relationship between demand supply and quantity and price will always be in a linear a linear there will, will always be a linear relationship in them then cost volume analysis in the profit analysis we want to look at the cost what is the relationship between the quantity which an organization produces the cost of uh, production and the profit which the business make all these concepts are very important when it comes to linear function now let us start with the uh, commissions analysis